Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the video series on uh, EFT automation. In this video, we will look at uh, parameterizing our test cases. Uh, parameterization is uh, a process where you remove the static values and pass the value from external source. That external source could be a database, it could be external spreadsheet, or it could be data table that is within your test case. I mean, to the you know within your UFT, or it could be a text file. It could be you know uh, environment variable. It could be you know again built-in variable, or it could be you know I mean system variable or user-defined variable. It could be anything. As long as the value is coming from an external source and not the script itself, that's nothing but parameterization. You know, so far we have seen uh, uh, our test cases in such a way that, you know, you are recording something and then you are playing it back. And we had checkpoints, we had, did other little customizations, but the data that is being passed to the application has been static, meaning the same values have been passed to the test case. Say, for example, it doesn't matter how many times you run this test case, the user ID is going to be Mercury, period, because that's what it will pass. Say let's go into uh, make reservation. Now here, you know, based on uh, uh, the current data, you can tell that's a date, that's a from city, that's a to city, and that's the name of the uh, customer. And then we said two tickets and clicked. Now, same thing, it doesn't matter how many times you run, the same data is sent to the application, period. It will never change. Now, what if we want to, you know, send, you know, different kinds of data? You know, one way is to, we can go here, and instead of, uh, you know, 15, we can say 2014, and it may work, it may not work, depending on the date. Say, you know, it's not, this is, um, not a future date, so obviously this will not work. Let's say if I change it to, you know, September 22nd, 2015, yeah, this will work. But the thing is, we are changing the uh, data within the script. Again, you know, that's not, uh, that is not a parameterization. Now, but if you run the script, it will send this date. Now here, instead of Frankfurt, what if I had a Denver? That'll work, right? Because this will pass Denver. But what if we want to pass it from the external resource or external source, right? So that's what is parameterization. We want to change that, all that. Now, the easiest way to do parameterization is uh, we can go into keyword view, uh, view, keyword view. And once we go in there, you know, we, you know, these are all uh, you know, items and then operation, and you have data. And <clears throat> say, for example, we want to parameterize the date. Click within the cell, and then you get a little icon on the right-hand side. You click that. You get to the screen. View configuration options. It's a constant. Click on the second radio button, which is parameter, and then you will control. Uh, the data that's being passed from external source. Now, in this case, it's going to be data table. We'll talk about data tables, uh, what is global and local is. So for now, we'll keep it global as a quick run to see and experience a parameterization. So once we click OK, then the the information gets parameterized, meaning you know, now you know this is the name of the parameter. You can I can give some meaningful names, say for example, date. Click OK, and if I go to uh, the Data tab here, I can see it here. It's under Global. We'll talk about these other tabs later. But so under Global, sorry, under Global, on the Global Sheet, have this date and the date. 
say Frankfurt, I want to click the same button within the cell, parameterized using data table, right? And I'm going to give it a uh, uh, from city. It's a from city. Click OK. And by default, it's a global sheet. Going there. And then next, I'll do, do the same thing for two city. Let's say two city global sheet. As you can see, it is whatever constant value the script has that is going into the very as the very first record value. So this was the customer name. This was number of tickets. So we can do number of tickets. So now we have all this information here. Let's uh, go into the login script and let's parameterize this as well. For the login, this is the user name and we'll parameterize the password as well. That's the password. So now if you look at the script, uh, let's go into the expert view or editor view. Let's go into the login and now you see we had dot set and we had dot, you know mercury here. Instead now we have a data table. It says username. This corresponds to the column name which is here and it says DT global sheet. DT global sheet represents the global sheet. If I say DT local sheet then it goes to local but we'll talk about that local sheet global sheet later. But for now, all I want you all to follow is that the process of parameterizing the test case. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, run the script and see if this works. Okay, so we just saw that after what we did, the script just ran fine. And within the script, we don't have the actual data to be passed, but we are using the data from the data table. So we have used global sheet so far. Now let's uh, uh, tweak this uh, global sheet real quick and see the impact and understand uh, what it is all about. So here I can, uh, as long as I pass in the right value, you know, it will work. Say for example, let me go ahead and uh, run the sample application. Okay, here for the from from city, I have you know about ten, approximately ten cities. So I can have any of these values in the from city. Same way, as long as the value is listed here, I can use it here. What happens if I use something that is not valid? You know, of course, the script will fail at that point. So let us uh, do a quick thing here. Sorry, I'm going to copy the whole line, whole, whole row, and paste it here in the, within the second row as you can see there's a dark black lines and the lines below here are all gray meaning it you know there are two records say for example if i select that row and delete the information it still looks as if i have two rows in there and that's how you know the software looks at it as well it, it will process the first record and then it'll go to the next record and it'll use all the blank values, which of course will fail. So in order to, uh, you know what, I'll talk about that here in a minute. Let me just copy this, run the script and prove to you that it actually works. So for the from city, I'll pick um, Paris. And for two city, I'll do Denver. Let me close the application. Now let me run the script now. Oh, 
uh, most likely uh, it will fail on the second record. I know it's gonna. That's why you know, it, it, it's actually looking for a, for a, you know for the dialog box for the login dialog box and it's not finding it. I'll explain you why it failed. The way this script works is you know I'm starting the application using record and run settings. So what happens is you know when you run the script it will start the application using record and run settings and then it will start running the actions in this particular order so the way this works with the global sheet is it will start you know as you start the script it invokes the application and then it goes to the global sheet and it will run all these actions for this first record and then it'll go to the second record and try to execute the or run the login action but for the login action to work you need the login dialog box but you get the login dialog box only when you start the application but the application was closed here so that's the problem so in order to fix this we need to make the script self-contained rather than depending on the actual run settings let us you know maybe introduce a new uh, action here that can start our application. I'll create this real quick. I'll call it init. You might have seen this in the other scripts. I'm going to use system util dot run to start the application. And then I'll go to record and run settings and pick the first radio button. That way you know it will not start when we run the script. So because we want the script the init script or this action to start the application and the next thing I need to do is because init is at the very end because it because this is the action that starts the application this needs to be all the way at the top so now when the first record runs it will run the init script meaning the init action init action will run the or start the application and then by the time it goes to the login now it ha it will find the login dialog box and it'll start using it so let's go ahead and run the script so I would expect it to process the first record and let's see if we can see it's here Frankfurt and London and next time it goes it should be Paris and Denver okay it's starting the application again this time Paris and London okay so we know that uh, uh, now the script actually runs both the records and now one other thing uh, yeah, when you first start your uh, script and you try to have these multiple records uh, you might encounter an issue not an issue where you know your script will only process the first record and then it just pretty much stops and that might be because the default setting go to the right click on your test case and click on settings and then go to run and make sure you have the second radio button selected which means a run on all records sorry rows by default the first radio button is selected I you know I had previously gone in and selected the second radio button that's why you know it was just processing all records so if your script runs the first record and then stops executing the say you know all the subsequent rows make sure you go here and select the second radio button and you can run your script again or you can do use the third radio button and specify the exact rows to be executed or you know number of iterations that you want to perform okay that's one quick tip Okay, that's a basic thing, and then in the next uh, part of this um, parameterization videos, we look into uh, global and uh, you know local data sheets.